In this live video auction training, I'm gonna be sharing with you, first of all, a real live auction where my students came along with me. And also I'm gonna be sharing with you my seven top tips on how you can actually bid. And finally, I'll be sharing with you answers to many questions that my students were asking at the auction, where we were just relaxing, chilling out, and really going over the excitement that happened on the day. So enjoy the video. Today we're at Vernon Marcus Auctions in the Connaught Rooms in London and I'm really excited because it's a live auction and um, we haven't had those for a while. Now the great thing about auctions is that you can actually get discounted deals and as the gavel goes down there's an exchange of contracts, a legally binding contract. Everything is being sold at fire sale value and that's what you're looking for. So projects where you can get 25% discounted deals as the gavel falls, exchange of contracts and you have a good deal. At the same time there's a lot of projects that are being sold in there with a lot of challenges and problems that you can't overcome as well. So you've got to find the right deals. So auctions are a great way of doing this. Tip number one is the Avenger bid. You pause at about 20% away from what your maximum bid is. And you come back in and if in that situation the bid is slowing down and it slows down and kind of pauses, you go in with your max bid. You go in with your max bid and what you do is even if the price was about 20% away, you've gone in and what you've done is you've just thrown your competitors into confusion. Cam, you mentioned something about the auction process. Mm. I was gauging what was happening online and mm. where they were coming to their limit. Mm. And I was, of course, approaching mine knowing that I should have been in the region of about 165, give or take 5% maybe. Mm. But I ended up um, uh, bidding on the second occasion and dropping out, mm -hmm. and then but ready to move back in for the kill. How much you buy it for? 170,000. 170,000. And in terms of income figures, because you're going to keep this one, aren't you? Income figures in total with all the units that you've got there, yes. how much? And you like this? Expecting 25,000 a year. How young are you? Uh, 80 years uh, young. Patrick there, young 80 year old, yes. going in, putting people at shame in their 50s, 60s and 70s. Tip number two is the undisclosed reserve, one of my personal favourites. So after the auction bids have actually happened, you can decide to buy that price at reserve price. Because that property needs to be sold at auction conditions and the lowest price acceptable is reserve price. And because it hasn't sold, you can go in and you can actually find out what that figure is and you can actually pay that figure. Now here's Sean. Now Sean actually implemented this specific tip at the auction and here he is sharing his experience with you. Yeah, it was quite interesting because they did say that they can um, negotiate with the vendor at a better price to try and get that, to try and get the proper price down if you want something and it doesn't go. Now here's tip number three and tip number three is for you if you want to be outside your comfort zone and you really want to work the auction room, this one's for you. The auctioneers are magnificent at their craft. They will always be working for the seller and they will be able to get a higher price for the seller. They are also allowed to take bids off the wall. So all the way up to reserve price, they can literally just point at the wall and bring up the price. The behavior of people were uh, exactly like you said, for example, um, under the reserve price, they kind of bounce off the bids and you don't even understand who's bidding it, but they are just like raising the price to some precise level. When they notice that the auction is slowing down, what they'll do then is they'll go into smaller increments because the smaller increments are perceived value for people. And what that means is people are more likely to bid further up on a smaller number. So what you want to do is do what I do. So number one is walk out of the room. Yeah, because you can't bid while you're not in the room. Grab a coffee, come back in, have a little chit chat and you're back in again. Slow the auction down. So where they're saying 110, 120, 130, 140, you go in and go. One? 141? 140 and they have to take a bid. They have to take your bid. Now, from one, it's very difficult for them to actually go back into double digits. 
So they've got to go to 141, uh, uh, do I get 142? Uh, what have you done? You've confused them and you've slowed the auction down. Another thing that you can do is you can signal half. 110, 120, 130 and you go, you do this. So when you do that, what they have to do is they have to drop it by half. So 110, 120, 130, 140, 150 and you go, 155. <laughs> now, I hope you're liking these deep dive tips. And as you can see, they're pretty simple, right? Now, I've shared three with you so far. And now we're jumping into tip number four, which is the trial close bid. And when the bidding happens and the heat exchange is happening, what you can then do is you can work on your like, intend and must. Now with your must, remember, that's the final top figure that you will accept. So we make that number never a number that is a round number. That number always ends up being a random number. So for example, if you're going to bid 250,000 and that's your, that's your max bid, and that's your must price, because that's the maximum that you will offer. Rather than 250,000, you might go 251,421 pounds. Yeah? So you make it a random number. What this does is everybody else has worked the numbers out, like what I say, on the round numbers. So you literally snipe that deal just because you went a little bit further. The fifth tip I want to share with you is all about gaining competitive advantage at the auction. Now this really works well in a live auction room and I want to share with you how you can gain that competitive advantage and this is all about understanding who's around you in the room. First of all, you have the naughty neighbour. So the naughty neighbour is somebody who is bidding on a property typically that is next door to them. It can also be in commercial scenarios, it might be the tenant of the property that is being sold because a tenant might have a lease on the property and they might want to buy that property because it's their business, their own occupier for example. So the naughty neighbour will typically pay a higher value because the, the value to them is much more than, than it is to anybody else as an investor. The next person I want to share with you, the next type of person, is the institutional investor. And the institutional investor will look something like this. They will be on their phone because what they're doing is they are bidding for their investors. They haven't got the skin in the game to the extent that you have. It's just a number for them, it's just a job for them. Next one is the budgeting builder. You don't really want to create a bidding war with them because they can bid much higher than you. Typically, as figures, they can typically bid another 20% higher than you, 20% higher. The margin that they normally can save is around that maximum sort of 20%. The next person I want to share with you is the Holmes and Under the Hammer Amateur. What we've got to remember is a TV program is a TV program. It's a show. They just watch these programs and think, how difficult can it be? I'll have a go. I'll gain it from my own experience. I'll make some mistakes and learn from them. I'm not going to do that. If I did that, I would call myself foolish. I don't want to play with my money and lose it. Why would you want to do that when you can watch this and learn and do it properly? So that's four characters that you'll find in the room. And the fifth one is, of course, you, the professional investor who's learning what to do and then gaining experience and jumping in there and making sure that you're getting it done right. Now let's jump back into the auction room and let's see if any of our Premier Property Inner Circle members actually noticed what was going on in the auction room with this particular tip. There was one guy with a laptop and a phone throughout the auction. I think that's what you said about the mastermind about institutional investors and the slow process. And that's what you're doing. For sure, that's an institutional investor. Um, they're going to be slightly slower than you, they're bidding for somebody else. Uh, so yeah, you can find out who your competition in the room is. But who noticed that I kept on about the budgeting builder on the right hand side? You, know, you see them standing there, you know who your competition is because they, they can always you know, really kind of beat your price because they cut the margin. So you know who you're dealing with. Now if you're joining me for the first time, my name is Cam Devady. I'm the founder of Premium Property Group, an investor developer over the last 30 years. And because of this, over the last decade, I've trained over 200,000 people to help them to actually upskill in property. Tip number six is very deep yet so simple but not simplistic. And this is all about reading the auctioneer's body language. What are they actually saying to you with their body? And it's amazing what you can actually pick up. So enjoy the tip. So the body language of the auctioneer changes. It relaxes. There's a gap. There's a breath. Sometimes they'll gently say, the property is open for the room. The property is open for the room means I've reached reserve price. They'll go up to all the way up to bidding price, 135, 140, 145, 150. Uh, the property is now for sale. They'll actually say it as well. And they mix it all up. 
So be looking for these signs so that you can actually subtly understand where reserve price actually is. Now I've shared six scenarios with you that work in an auction room. Now the seventh one I want to share with you also has a colorful name just like the ones I've shared with you so that you ingrain this information and you follow this. Now the seventh tip is the not too early bid. This works for a lot that is quite quirky. Something that's not the average mid-terraced house or semi-detached property that everybody wants to buy. You're going to get too much competition and that usually is going to go over the price. However, when it comes to the ones I'm mentioning now, the quirky deals, you will find that there aren't a lot of bidders on that. We'll wait right till the end. Let all the bidding happen. And in the last 30 seconds of the bids online, or when the gavel falls once, and you watch the timing on the second one, because the third one can come too fast and somebody else might have bought it. So you've got to move forward on the second hit of the gavel. So it goes once, goes twice, and you come in with your bid. So you wait right till the end. Now, I hope you find these seven tips useful that you can actually use in the real auction world. And I look forward to hearing from you with your successes. Now do subscribe to our channel and get the latest videos and click on that bell icon to make sure that you get the latest notifications. I'm doing a number of content videos all around property. So if you want to get started in scaling your property business, well then come and join us. Now it's time to jump back into the auction with our Premier Property Inner Circle members to find out what they actually thought of the auction on the day. This comes in now at 32.50. It's selling at 13 once, 13 twice, Third and final time at 13. Sells at 13, Mr. A. Well done. Thank you for your bits in the room. Anybody else want to share their experience? I mean, what do you guys find? There's a lot of people getting up and down and going in and out and stuff. And thinking, what's going on? Being in the room, I think, yeah, definitely helps to see people with it. Um, yeah. It motivates you for next time. <laughs> First time I've been to the auction house, um, so it was a good experience firsthand to see it because you see it on TV and stuff like that yeah. you know you everybody goes on to write moves and looks at a lot of properties and it's always guide from and it's nice to know what property prices actually reach to at the beginning I was a little bit lost uh, but then you go into the rhythm and I think if you do your due diligence it can be a choice to, to buy a property through an auction what's your one word or emotion Sorry. for today um, educational, fascinating, excitement, eye-opening, <laughs> inspirational, intelligent, confident, interesting, really good, <laughs> excitement, inspiring, learning, exciting, informative. We'll be back. Oh, we'll be back in motion houses again. Experience. Research more. Motivation. Humble.